So it's time for a little bit of matrimony. And I'm like, come on, fruit cook, yeah. I want to put my soapbox, that's basically it. Let's talk about drag and all its forms. Hey guys, thanks so much for clicking on the video. This is my review for Real Housewives of Potomac. This is season four, episode two, and we've actually gotten to the wedding. It is actually Candace's wedding, which really was pretty. It really did end up being pretty, but there was a whole lot of moving pieces going on at this wedding that had absolutely nothing to do with the wedding. Absolutely nothing to do with the wedding. Anyway, first thing we actually started off with was Cal and Giselle going to work out. Giselle's trying to get her body right and get herself feeling good because um, her old man is coming back. Sherman is actually coming and he's going to escort her to the wedding. They've worked out their differences and everything is going to be smooth. Um, so Sherman will be back into the fold. Um, Cal basically sat and told her he was not feeling Sherman at all. And at the time, I, I kind of looked at Cal and I'm like, hush, Cal. Hush. And, you know, because when it comes to, like, people in their relationships, I usually take the standpoint of just shut my face. I let them do, because you can't live it for them, you know what I mean? Let them do what they're going to do. And if you, I mean, you can say, well, I, I, I ain't too sure. But it just seemed like it was a, a, a back and forth, like this is not the first time he said he wasn't feeling him. And she is all in. So just leave it alone. Nobody, if I'm trying to be happy, I really don't want to hear you with the negative. So just kind of leave it alone. Let people live their little thing and you be there. If you're a friend, you'll just be there for them if things don't go the way that they want it to go. So that's kind of, I was wanting Cal to like stop because he was kind he was real negative, real, real negative. Um, but then later on, we found out that Cal was actually right. So I had to actually eat crow and say, hmm, okay. Cal knew more than I did and obviously more than Giselle did. We're going to talk about it in a minute. Candace and her mom were together. They went to pick up her gown. So she goes, and I didn't even actually think they were actually going to show the gown, like, at that time. I thought they would, like, literally make us wait until, you know, she actually walked down the aisle. But, no, they actually showed the gown, and I kind of looked at it, and I was like, it's pretty enough, I guess. Um, I was bothered by the shoulders. But that was a design situation. That had nothing to do with Candace or anything like that. It was all in the design. I felt like the shoulders were heavy. They looked heavy. There's a lot of pearls and stuff on the shoulder. And I'm like, if that is not an exact fit, that shoulder is going to be problematic. And sure enough, I was right. Um, first thing I, I noticed as she go, going down the aisle, her shoulder strap was falling. Her shoulder strap was falling. I'm like, I would have been pissed. I would have been pissed. And that's one of them things. When it's like that, it has to be exact because if it's too tight, it'll pop. And if it's not, it's going to it's gonna fall. I, I was like, mm -mm, that's problematic. And then they had some other stuff that was hanging on it that wasn't helping. I was like, mm -mm, design issues, complete design issues. It probably seemed really good in theory, but then actually having it done, it's got to be exact or it's going to be problematic. And it really was. It got on my nerves. There were like three different sections as we were watching, where that strap was about to drive me nuts. And it was on one side. One side, her strap, <laughs> she was adjusting her strap. I was like, mm -mm. nope, not for all that money. Anyway, that's just me. Moving on. Um, when, Like I said, I didn't think they were really going to show the gown, but they did. Her shoes, bad as shit. When that dude took them shoes out that box, I said, 
I didn't really even care what the gown looked like after I saw her shoes. Them shoes were absolutely breathtaking. They were, they were so pretty to me. I was like, come on, Candace, with that good old shoe. Anyway, um, her mother, that mother is a bit much. Now, I tried to be nice. I really did. I tried to be nice. But at the point that her mother sat there and called, went through a list of names, and called this girl a list of names, you know that I told Miss Patty? Stay your ass at home. That's what I want you to do. I want you to stay away from me. Being as though I'm all these things and all these things tend to bother you, I want you to stay your ass away from me on that day because that day is one day you're not going to make me miserable. Mommy, stay your ass home and I'll go back to being a narcissist, a brat, a diva, a little princess, and then I got daddy issues. I'm going to do all them things, but I ain't fucking doing them with you on my wedding day, mommy. Stay your ass home. Yeah, you pay. Thank you. But stay your ass home because I don't even want you there. Now, you going down a list of you want this person there and you don't want that person there and all of that. How about you stay your black ass home? How about that? It's easier to leave you home and let everybody else who's happy be happy together and you stay your good old ass at home. And thanks for paying for it. And if you want to cancel your checks, that's fine. See, I, 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 I can't. I can't. I can't kiss ass for monetary reasons. That's just not me. I'm not equipped with it. That's the way my mom actually created me. I wasn't created with the ass kisser gene. I don't have it. I never have. And as a matter of fact, I don't have the ass kisser gene. And then my grandmother equipped me with the gene that taught me how to have you to kiss my ass instead. I ain't got time for it. I couldn't believe her. Yeah, little girl, you got daddy issues and you're a narcissist. You're a brat. All of this in the bridal parlor. And the people were just looking and I was looking too. I said, this bitch is unreal. Unreal. She is such a bitch to the point that the little girl was on Watch Andy, uh, Watch What Happens Live on Andy. That bitch is still over there carrying on about that brother being at the wedding and stuff. And then when you look in the brother's face, they fucking look just alike. Lady, are you kidding? How, I mean, I know there's a lot of emotions when you have been cheated on, because I'm one of the first ones to tell you about infidelity. Infidelity and me don't do well at all. And I, I really, I probably never forgive. You know, when it comes to infidelity, I don't. And then when there's a living being, I've been there. I've been there. I've done that. I, I've been there. I've been with a person. And then the next thing I know, there's these living little beings that actually popped up because I got cheated on. And I never forgave it. I never forgave it. You know what I mean? But after a while, and you don't have to forgive it. But if you're going to, you ain't nothing you can do. You can't take it away. It's breathing, it's living. And when you look around and it looks exactly like your child, bitch, get over yourself. That boy looks exactly like his sister. And you can tell he was happy to be there. He was happy to be amongst his sister. And he looked a little nervous at first. You know what I mean? Because there's something to be said about being unwanted. And I'm sure he knew that he was kind of unwanted. But then, you know, when she started introducing him to people and different things like that, um, he, he started having himself a great time. But all before that, when I was looking at him, he was looking very uneasy and out of place at the wedding. So I was glad that she took it upon herself to make sure that he was being fit in. Because if that mother would have had her way, that stinking bitch would have had it where everybody was shunning him. Like he did something. He didn't do nothing. That lady got a problem. But anyway, at that bridal parlor, Candace told her mother, this is the, well, this is, you know what? We're going to agree to not agree, not even to disagree. We're going to agree to not agree. And this is the end of the conversation. Ended. I said, oh, girl, you got it now. You got it. I said, she pushing. She getting there. She pushing. But stuff like that, she'll push your own child away from you. But that's a nasty, oh, I don't know how she deal with her. There's no way. I couldn't do it. I could not do it. Anyway, Giselle ends up calling Robin. 
a day of the wedding because she's sitting there and I was wondering what was going on. She's sitting there getting her makeup together and she's saying, I look terrible. And I'm looking up like, you don't look terrible. Now I've seen the one little wonky eyelash. I'm like, girl, take it off and put it back on. That's all. Take that mother off, put it back on. Start all over. You know what I mean? But the makeup, her makeup looked good and everything. And they wanted us to believe she did it. Do y'all believe Giselle did her own makeup? Of course she did. Get out of here. Anyway, um, but Sherman done called and said he ain't coming. Really, Sherman? You call me the day of and tell me you're not going. I'm on my way to a wedding. Really, Sherman? Now, I'm like uh, Giselle with this little situation. See, because Juan... And that damn Juan looked good. I said, okay, Robin, now I'm kind of understanding some of what your plight is. Juan looked good. You hear me? I was like, look at Juan. You dress up good, Juan. I ain't like as stupid as Robin, but I kind of understand what the problem is. Cute. Very, very cute. But anyway, Juan was telling him, you know, you got to kind of, mm -mm, Juan, you want everybody to be stupid like Robin, and it's not going to happen. I'm like Giselle. This would be it for me and Sherman. Goodbye, Sherman. Here's my ass. You can kiss it. And I'd be done with Sherman's ass. Um, she was very upset and she was very embarrassed. That was her main thing. She was embarrassed. And uh, her pocket gay showed up for her. So that was cool. Cal got dressed and came on right on to the wedding. Came right on with her. You know, ain't no problem. Um, then we get to the wedding. The wedding itself. Candace was doing the most. I said, okay, you're acting like you're barely. I don't like this one curl. Girl, look, it's an ugly hairstyle. It ain't going to get no better. It's ugly. It, it didn't, the hairstyle wasn't cute. It didn't make no difference what they did. That was just her nerves. That shit wasn't going to get no cuter. It looked like a helmet, and it was going to look like a helmet. And it was cool. Yeah, yeah, the helmet and heavy straps. You okay, girl? Go on and get married, honey. Her and, um, her 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 dude looked good too. Chris looked really really nice. I was like, check out Chris. Um, and then wait, and I I screamed when she said, keep keep my mother away from me, honey. Just keep her away from me. I agree. Kept her away. Her mother was like, oh god, I don't even know. And her mother looked a mess. Her hair was a mess. Her makeup was a mess. That dress was hideous, hideous. I said, girl, if you don't look like the lady that come through afterwards and do all the laundry, honey, that was horrible. You was all, you what, what, you had all these things to say and you didn't like this and you didn't like that, but you like that shit you had on? Girl, good night, honey. I thought she looked a mess. She looked old and washed up and matronly. She looked like an old washerwoman. That didn't, mm -mm, she didn't look good at all. The father looked real nice. The stepfather looked real nice. Mama looked a hundred years old. I said, mm mm. That was terrible, all of it. That hair was the worst. I was like, girl, them colors, they was just like color one, color two. Color one, color two, color one, uh, all the way back. I said, that's ugly, ugly. You can see where the tracks were sewed in. I said, that's horrible, horrible. That was a horrible wig, horrible. Anyway, Karen and Giselle showed up completely late. Juan and Robin's trifling ass, they showed up, the wedding was over. Oh, y'all just came to eat, honey. <laughs> they just came to eat and drink. <laughs> Got them vagrants. I screamed. And they was like, are we going to pretend that we see it? Everybody saw that y'all didn't see it. Didn't see the wedding. Y'all need to stop. Uh, I did like, um, I liked Robin's dress, but not for a wedding. I'm still, now some things, some traditions, you know, there's a lot, most of the traditions that we had as far as fashion goes have been thrown to the wayside at this point. Like you can wear white after Labor Day and all that. You do what you want to do now, days. But I still can't get with anybody's ass being dressed in white at a wedding. I just can't. Something about it just seems so disrespectful to me. I don't care if it's white, if it's ecru, if it's eggshell, if it's off-white, if it's uh, champagne. I don't give a shit. Nobody at a wedding should be dressed in white except for the bride. Period. Period. Unless that's what you got to think your theme is, and I would never make my theme. My girlfriend actually did a theme, and her wedding was white and black, like a chess, like a chess game, and everything was white and black. So she had people dressed in white and black. Her wedding, it was beautiful, but um, no, sorry. 
Um, I've told you all before, I've always been Diana Ross. I've never been a fucking Supreme. I never intend to be a Supreme. And um, ain't nobody at my wedding going to be in any form of white but me and the napkins on the table. And I don't know, I might not even allow the napkins to be white. Not happening. So I just didn't like that. I was like, why are you sitting there in that extra dress? But pretty dress, very pretty dress. Um, Karen's dress, I didn't like Karen's dress. I was like, why didn't you just put the black one on? But she, Cause she was trying to get ready to pick the white one or the black one, it was a white, red and black dress. It was horrible. I didn't like that. I didn't like that at all. I look like she's on her way to work. Didn't care for it. Um, anyway. The vows were funny when Chris did his vows and they were literally all the R&B titles. And that Giselle, she's so tacky. When she got in that damn confessional and say, who would do that? Who would use all those black R&B songs for their wedding vows? Oh, sure. The white man with the brown dick. That's who. I was like, Girl, are you ever going to let that go? I'm so sorry Candace ever even said that. They were even talking about that on Andy. I'm like, I know that man gets tired of hearing that. Like, everybody in America knows that you got a brown dangling, honey. So I might as well go show it and get some money. But anyway, she sat on Andy. I inspected it, and it really is brown. He might as well show it and make a coin. Anyway, you keep talking about it, stupid. Anyway, Ashley was being Ashley. She walked around a bitch that got drunk. Miss, oh, I don't drink. You know, I, I, I stopped drinking. You ain't stopped drinking. You was drunk as shit. She got drunk as hell. Drunk down. She sat up there, drank all that liquor, and she was walking around there. And then I was surprised when Giselle told her, you know, how she was feeling sad about Sherman not showing up. And to me, did, you, did it seem like Ashley was sitting there and had solace in it and was like, really now? And she just grinning and smiling. I said, oh, huh. Giselle took some shots, shot, 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 shot. That bitch was tore up. She tore up and then she just started being a social butterfly. I said, good, Giselle. She was there. That's it. I enjoyed watching Giselle for the most, the way, the whole time that's been on the air. She was drunk and she was walking around and having herself a good time. She really let her hair down and was just having herself a good time. And it was good to see, you know, I, instead of all that moping around, she was having a good time. And um, yeah, she, uh, Monique went to apologize. Now that drunk shit wasn't working there. That was kind of getting on my nerves because she wasn't accepting the apology. And Chris came and just got her. It was like, let's go. Let's go. Her Chris, her husband Chris came and was like, let's go. And um, they went on about their business. Uh, later on, Giselle got more drunk as she went over to Monique and told her, you know, I accept your apology. And she's like, I'm like, you know, she's like, child, I, life is too short. Fuck Sherman. Fuck all that bullshit. I'm done with it. And I ain't trying to do all that. So it don't even make no difference. Then after that, uh, Candace went out and said she had to, to pee. She had to go pee and all that. And here, well, she had told us earlier she had something up her sleeve. She changed into this little dress. I didn't like it. But she changed into this little dress. Look, looked like a little bronze little baby doll dress. And she sang an original song for Chris. So that was nice. Um, yeah, something going on with the makeup too. I, I didn't like her makeup. Her makeup seemed a little, a little drastic. Seemed a little drag, little drag queeny, a little drastic. It was a little drastic and it looked a little dark. Like there was like a lot of bronzer used. And I noticed it again last night on, um, Andy's little show. She had a, t her, her face was, she was like bronzed out of her mind to the point, like she was painted like a drag queen. She's painted like one of the girls to the point where she looked different. And that's the thing that I always, that's, I'm going to go do this on my soapbox and I'm getting off of this. That's why I, I always, I, I don't like that. I fear that. And on my channel where my ladies, y'all are always asking me about doing a full um, makeup tutorial, and I'm not doing it. 
I'm not doing it for that very reason, because one, you don't need to see what I do because you shouldn't be doing what I do. I am a drag queen. I am a boy. I have to transfer from boy look to girl look. You should not be wearing as much makeup as me. So I don't want to even put that out there and have you thinking that it's okay for you to wear that kind. It's not. If you're not doing something with the theater or something on stage, there is no reason that you should be following my makeup regimen. Now, if it's all about the way I did an eye or something like that, or the way I did my lip, something of that nature, I got no problem with it. But to literally follow my makeup regimen, as far as my contours and all that, you ain't got no business wearing all that makeup. And then you end up looking like a drag queen. And what is the point? What is the point? Makeup is to enhance, not change, unless you're doing something theatrical. But just for you to go out for a night, you don't want to be looking like somebody else. You want to look like you. You want to look like your best self. You don't want to look like no drag version of yourself. Now, everybody do what they want to do. And there are times, and I say it all the time, there are tons of drag makeup tutorials on YouTube. None of them belong to James Caldwell and it ain't going to happen because I don't promote that. I want you all to look like the best version of your female self. I don't want you looking like the drag version of your female self. I don't understand it. So, no, I ain't contributing to that. Anyway, now I'm done soapbox. I put on bum, bum, bam it, and I'm back. Everything with the wedding, nice. The wedding was gorgeous. Um, it went over budget all the way to $200,000. The reception was very pretty. Um, two hundred grand. I don't know about all that, but okay. But it was nice. And it seemed like they had a good time. And there was a lot of moving parts. You know, Ashley and her husband, her husband tried to, he wanted to, to talk to, why do people, why do they always want to do that on reality shows? I was going to talk to Ray. Michael, this ain't the time to talk to Ray during nobody's wedding. Sit your ass down somewhere. Sit down. You know, it's, the, it's not, a wedding ain't the time to be clearing up no differences. A wedding is time to sit down, act like guests have a little something to eat, have a little something to drink, take your ass home, get a gift. That's it. That's it. It ain't about you. It ain't about you. But anyway. All right, you guys. That's it. That's all I got to say about the wedding. It was nice. And nothing popped off. Like I said, a lot of moving pieces, but nothing popped off. Thank goodness. I ain't tear up the girl's wedding. That would have been tacky. Tacky, tacky, tacky. All right, I'll talk to you guys next week. Later.